Um, so we hear the words, the terms antimicrobial resistance and antibiotic resistance often used interchangeably, and those can be a little bit confusing. So um, microbes include um, you know, viruses, bacteria, fungi, um, amoebas, all the kind of microscopic organisms that uh, are all around us at all times and in our bodies and, and in uh, environmental matrices. Um, so when we talk about antimicrobial resistance, we're talking about all of these microbes collectively. So fungi that are uh, resistant to antifungal um, medications and viruses that are resistant to antiviral medications. But when we talk about, um, about antibiotic resistance, we're specifically talking about within bacteria. And so when, when a, a bacterium receives or develops through uh, evolution or, or some modification, the ability to be resistant to one or more antibiotics, um, then they have an antimicrobial or antibiotic resistance gene. That's, um, that's what we call antibiotic resistant bacteria. So you may hear us use AMR and ARB interchangeably, um, but we want to make sure that, that you understand that antibiotic resistant bacteria is just that one class of microbes. It just deals with bacteria, not with um, virus and fungi and, and amoebas and, um, and such. This just kind of shows a, a simplified uh, process of how resistance can develop. Um, so for instance, if you, you, have a, um, an, a, antibi you have a bacterial infection, and so you have these uh, pathogenic germs or bacteria in your body that are causing some reaction, but you have a lot, lot of other microbes in your body as well. Most of them are doing great things for you all the time, helping with digestion and, and um, you know, they're, they're not at all harmful, but you take an antibiotic for the one that's causing an illness and a lot of the good bacteria or the beneficial bacteria get wiped out as well. Um, if by chance, not all of the um, infectious bacteria are wiped out, now they've been exposed to that drug and the next time they see it, they, they're going to develop some um, methods for not letting it affect them quite the same. And we'll, we'll get into some of those more, um, more the microbiology and of that and uh, biochemistry of that later in the semester. But now those bacteria that are resistant to that particular medication are multiplying. And every time they multiply, the new bacteria have that same resistance. They can also pass resistance um, from one microbe to another. So, one important point that through our outreach that we're trying to make with uh, consumers is that antibiotics are very powerful medicines. They've, they've saved a lot of lives since they were first um, developed back in the early 1900s, but they don't treat non-bacterial infections. So they don't treat parasites or viruses or fungi or amoeba infections. They only fight bacteria and antibiotics have to be used judiciously. One of the things that we often hear is that overuse of antibiotics is the issue. So we hear overuse of antibiotics in livestock production, overuse, overprescription of antibiotics in um, human health. And one thing we need to realize is that any use of antibiotics um, can contribute to development of antibiotic resistance. And in fact, in environments where there are no antibiotics being used, where animals or people haven't had an influence on the environment, we still see antimicrobial or antibacterial resistance um, in those environments. So um, when they're competing for resources in that um, environmental uh, setting, and if one bacteria is introduced to a chemical that's intended to kill it, then that bacteria will try to evolve and you know, survival of the fittest, like, like any species, will try to evolve and find a way to survive that, um, that attack on it. And when it does that, it's developing resistance to that chemical. So the same way that we get bacteria in soil and the environment, we also see antibiotic resistant bacteria developing those soils as well. 
Um, so this is just some statistics on uh, antibiotic resistance. It's, it's um, definitely not picky about um, the people that are affected, anyone, any age, um, anywhere in the world. There's um, issues worldwide. In the US at least, um, almost 3 million people get an antibiotic resistant infection every year. And of those, there's about 35,000 that end up with the person, the patient dying. And so some of these infections are things that we've always been able to treat very easily. So, you know, tuberculosis, we don't really even hear about people getting tuberculosis much anymore. Um, gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted disease that has become resistant to multiple antibiotics. And so in, particularly in, um, I know we have, they've talked about that we have a, a pocket or a, a, a hot area of resistance in Nebraska, and it's usually associated with, you know, a, a younger generation college setting. Um, so some, you know, we've tried to talk to folks about just um, practicing safer sex practices so that if you're not transferring that infection, then you're not having to deal with the antibiotic resistance and trying to find the right combination of medications to treat it. And so the last point here is, so antibiotic resistance doesn't necessarily always lead to um, a severe health issue or death. Um, like we said, about 3 million people get an antibiotic resistant infection a year in the US. Um, about 35,000 people die. But those that get a re resistant infection that isn't necessarily that severe still are probably going to experience longer stays in the hospital. They're, there's a lot more medical expenses as they try different uh, ways to treat the infection. And so there's, there's an economic component to it as well as far as um, the cost of treating um, the health issues associated with antibiotic resistance. The idea is that when we talk about antibiotic resistance or antimicrobial resistance, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not just um, you know in the healthcare. It's not just an ad. It's not just in the environment. It's really all of those things together. And so this idea, when we're talking about the environment, we'll be talking with people who work in wastewater treatment, right? Septic tanks, wastewater treatment. Um, also, you know, getting into streams, but also just natural occurrence. I mean, there is antibiotic resistance just naturally that happens. Um, that has nothing to do with, you know, human in, in, impact, but we've definitely accelerated that um, over the last um, several decades. Um, again, in agricultural people who will talk about therapeutic use versus gross promotion, once it is in, it, just like us, we, you know, when we defecate, it goes to the wastewater treatment plant, and we hope to treat that the same thing with manure, and so what kind of manure treatment, because again, not all the antibiotics are metabolized, and um, even those that are metabolized, if we have resistance in our guts, those bacteria come out with our um, excrements. Um, and then again, with the healthcare, as we talked about. So it's the idea of this, all of these together. And then with this caveat of, of new drug discovery. So something that is that I didn't know until, you know, I got into this work more recently is that, you know, we haven't had a new antibiotic on the market that's been approved by the FDA. It's something like since like the 70s or 80s. It's early, late 70s, early 80s. You're still using these drugs that we have been using for the last 30 years, and we haven't been putting new more drugs into the market. So we're still using what, what works. And so this caveat that we also need to, you know, up our science and have this as a priority. This idea is that um, we have all of these different pillars. We have healthcare, we have ag, and the idea is are we speaking the same language? And, and during this class, is kind of expose you to the breath. So we will be pe have people coming in from the healthcare industry, from the ag industry, from food safety, from um, from wastewater treatment, and try to expose you to the breath of, of knowledge and really understand that we're all talking about the same thing, but we're often using different language and we have different focuses, but it's all this idea of antibiotic resistance. And so the idea of this class is to give you that breadth of knowledge um, so that you can go forward and maybe be in depth in one part of it.